Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. This video is Brooklyn Pony Part 46C. That tells you that there's two other videos ahead of this one with the same 46 sequence. So 46A, I was test fitting or actually installing the main assembly for the Vintage Air front runner system on the 347 stroker engine. Ran into some issues with that with a harmonic balancer, but I think that'll be addressed in a future date. From there, I did Brooklyn Pony 46B, which was the assembly or the test fitting of all the components that go on the front runner system. Also putting in the radiator and the condenser for the vintage air system. So I think everything went pretty well with that. We do have one issue with the what the connection will be between the water pump and the lower inlet on the radiator. And I may have something on order to take care of that. So if that shows up before I finish this video, we're gonna find out if I have something that'll work. So hopefully I do. Now, I wanna address a couple things. I know there's terms that I've used in these last two videos, and I was called out on my live stream on Monday. Um, I forget who it was, Boondocker maybe, I don't remember. But I used the term hex head and it's not correct the way I was using the term because I was referring to these bolts, okay? Now, I normally say, for me, these are just Allen head bolts. I never considered a technical term other than using an Allen wrench on an Allen head bolt. Apparently, there's a real technical term. And it's defined here in the instructions as socket head cap bolt. So, socket head cap bolt. That's what this would be called, with the Allen head <laughs> in it. Along with that, there's another one, uh, flat socket cap screw. And that would be the lower bolt, or lower countersunk flat bolt that holds a little clamp onto the um, tubes for the compressor on the on lower section. So. I apologize if there's any confusion over the terms that I use. I, I normally would just say Allen head bolt. And in the past, somebody didn't like that. I was saying Allen head bolt. So it is what it is. Uh, it's a bolt that you use an Allen head or Allen wrench on. So anyway, beyond that, I wanted to point out a couple other things going on before I go into this video. One of them is I have new t-shirts available on Teespring. And I know that people have asked for uh, different designs. And so I worked with um, Andrew from Grease Rookie Garage who has some great t-shirts on Teespring. And he came up with this for me. So these are available on Teespring. Just letting you know if you're interested in a variety of colors and uh, various other designs that are coming in the future. But I want to thank Andrew for helping me out with that. Another small thing I want to talk about. You know, as I'm doing these videos and I'm trying to keep up with tools and equipment and different things like that, and I mentioned this in my live stream on Monday, that I had an issue with my DA sander. The issue wasn't major, but it was enough to point out that there was a problem. The sander itself, I've used this for years and years and years. Ingersoll Rand, 45, 4151 is a part number for this one. And this one actually has a port where if you wanted to, you could hook up a vacuum. I don't use it. I keep the plug in there and just use it the way it is. But the problem I had was the pad. This is the pad that came with the sander. And I've used it, again, for years and years. You probably may have seen in some other videos that I had some issues with the Merca paper or Merca discs, the six inch disc, didn't want to stay on the pad. Now, we all become complacent. We all kind of just work with what we have and forget about the idea of updating certain things. This pad has bugged me for quite some time, but I, keep, I kept trying to use it. You know, it would stick like in the middle. You can, I mean, it's barely doing anything. So I was trying to take off some paint on the underside of the deck lid for the Jade 68 Mustang. And 
the disc keep kept flying off. So I ordered, and these are on Amazon, I've listed them on my page, uh, some replacement discs. And these are for, from TCP Global is the brand. And I've ordered two discs, and I want to point this out because, again, we forget about stuff wearing out. But, you know, there's something great about having stuff that works. Right? I'm very happy about this because <laughs> I've been fighting with this disc for so long. And this pad has holes in it, so if you do want to hook up a vacuum, you can. I like that. Now, I'll also point out that the two pads are different thicknesses. So this one has a little more flexibility on it. This one is a bit stiffer. Just an observation, but anyway, keep up with your tools, right? One other thing before I move on to test fitting the next component in the uh, vintage air system. I received as part of the whole package deal this transmission cooler. And this came, I think this is through Summit, is you know the, the product line or whatever. And I'm going to attempt to install this, but it may come at a future date because I want to make sure that the transmission lines from the bottom of the radiator are going to clear whenever I get the hose that hopefully takes care of the water inlet. So, combination of things. But, the cooler, pretty nice little deal here. You know, typical, typical transmission cooler and I'm going to again, try to make this work with everything that's in place on the front of the vehicle. So that'll come later. I thought I could try to do it with this video, but until I know for sure about the uh, fittings and stuff on the bottom of the radiator, I am not going to fight with that. So anyway, with that said, I'm gonna move on to trying to fit the main air box that goes into the dash or underneath the dash. So that, that'll be the next thing. And there's probably gonna be some details that I need to go over with that, and I'll try to address all those. So let's get started. Before I go any further, let me tell you, this is the part number 554164, EVAP kit, 64 and a half to 66 Mustang. And there's another number, 698121-26. Whether that's helpful, I don't know. But there's a big number written right there. So you saw what I pulled out of the box. Obviously there's going to be pieces and parts and tubes and stuff, right? Okay. This has a variety of plastic pieces, ductwork. Let's open it up and see what's in here. I'm going to set this... Well, this kit says uh, 64 and a half to 68 Mustang EVAP hardline kit. So we'll set that aside for now. All right. So obviously some tubing. I don't need that at the moment. It's got two. These are the little ports. Where the duct work goes under the dash, those will be the outlets, as I'm sure these are some variation of that as well. For the center, I would assume. These should be all the vents that go into these pieces. More plastic. Instructions. A wiring kit with the electronic controllers. Some brackets. Wiring. Some plates. Oh, look. 
block offs. You know what those are for? Of course you do. Those are for the cowl, block off the cowl inlet. So, yep. This bundle says gener Generation 4 Universal Wiring Kit Packing List. This one doesn't go into specific detail as to what the list is, but obviously some sort of module. It looks like the vent drain for the uh, water. And like I said, the brackets. So we're going to look at the instructions here. And again, that duct work over there, I'm not going to need it at this point. Um, you know, I may make sure that there's places to mount that, you know, under the dash as it should be. But I know that from previous experience of doing this on a 68 Mustang, this is something that needs to be considered because these controllers are electronic and they're meant to hook up to the original slide, you know, controls that you would have for your car. So I think the one that was, you know, I don't even know if one exists for the Brooklyn Pony. So this will have to come later because I, I know we don't have one of those controllers. All right, let's have a look at the instructions. Again, 64 and a half to 66 Ford Mustang Vapor Kit 554164. Gives you an inventory list. Some basic warning stuff as I've mentioned before. Important wiring notice. It's talking about some vehicles may have had some or all of their radio interference uh, capacitors removed. There should be a capacitor found on each of the following locations. So you, can, you just have to read over all of the instructions, obviously. Next page is talking about disassembly. And it's interesting, this, this is depicting a car that has AC already in it. So it's talking about removing these items. And then inside the car, removing any of the vents and the ductwork from inside. Here is the instructions to start with as far as assembly goes. So it's talking about putting in these defroster ducts which will go uh, below the grill for the speaker because the hoses, you know, the duct hose will attach to that later. So I'm about putting those in and then blocking off the fresh air intake or fresh air ports let's say on the cowl and to do that it gives you these now it's also mentioning using the OEM bolt or nuts and putting some silicone around this and attaching that and blocking off the fresh air intake that's simple enough I'm not going to do that right now the next section talks about Passenger side evaporator rear bracket template instructions. Cut out passenger side evaporator rear bracket template on page 26. Align the template with the four OEM holes as shown in figure four below. Drill a 932nd inch hole as indicated on the template. So it's using some existing holes on the firewall to locate mount points for the evaporator. And then the second part of that is driver side evaporator rear bracket template instructions and this is showing another template that needs to be cut out and it's going to also indicate another hole so I'm just going to start with that process and take care of those two holes and then as I move further forward it talks about putting on the firewall cover it's going to get cover up the existing hole uh, where the blower would have went and various associated hardware with that so I don't want to get too far ahead in the instructions so I'm going to back up and cut out those two templates on page 26 and 27 so there's one page 26 and page 27 Whoops, hopefully you can see that. Anyway, so that's where I'm at right now. You don't need to watch me use scissors. 
but I know how to use scissors. I just wanted to show you this because I thought this was pretty handy for Vinjair to put this on here. This is a different template. This is for modifying the center console. And again, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but it points out that due to printing variations, measure the line below before using this template. They're telling you this line needs to be six inches. And if it's off, then the scale is off. So that's pretty handy. You know, you can take a, a ruler and verify that the dimensions are correct. Okay, I've cut out the two templates and I've, I've gone a step further. Uh, this template, I think is the first one they talk about, is this is going to go in relation to where the blower would go. And I want to show you this because it says attached to engine compartment side of firewall. I'm going to show you a conflict with that in just a second. And then this one is telling you this is where the heater hoses would go. So as you can see, I cut out the holes because I wanted the visual reference whenever I put this in place. Same way with this one, I cut out the holes for three of these locations so that I would be able to see for sure that I'm on them. This one, all it says attached to passenger compartment side of firewall. So this one implies, I'm assuming, the interior, passenger side inside, where this one talks about engine compartment side of firewall. But let me show you why that's not going to work. Well, I say it's not going to work. However, it's not going to work at this point because I have these Mustangs to fear hood hinges in place. But if you take this template and I match up the holes, hopefully you can see that okay, I match up the holes to the holes in the firewall, well the hole wants me to drill is over here, which is behind the bracket or the hinge. So my plan is to move this inside the vehicle because the holes are the same, it doesn't really matter, but I'll move it inside the vehicle and see if I can't drill from the inside out. And also, this other template as well, if I put it over the holes where the heater would normally be, this hole, and I don't know if this is because it's a Dynacorn firewall or whatever, but there's a, a raised portion on this firewall. And I think, you know, the factory ones would have it as well. But, where it wants you to drill a hole, according to the template, it's right on the corner of that piece, of that raised section. So, eh, that could be a little more challenging. I am going to put this one on the inside as well, because it would be very difficult to drill out here. But I'll do, it, do them both from the inside. All right, let's we'll see if I can get these in place without breaking my neck. <laughs> so, the first one I want to put in is the one that'll go around the heater hose area, or the out outlets. So, let's see if I can do this. I can't reach that far. What I do know is these seat risers are not comfortable to lay on. Just a thought. Okay, now I need to verify that I'm on those holes correctly. It looks looks like I'm close. Now, of course, I know I've got them overlapping, but I wanted to do this to see how these holes matched from the inside, and that's that's pretty close, I guess. All right, so that one, take it down. I, uh, I realize now <laughs> I gotta mark that hole on the back side. Huh, yeah, okay, let me reset this. Let me just get this out of the way. Put this one up. And I have transferred, I've got a dot that I managed to get, you know, I put it, but see, look at this hole right here. This is the, 
These two holes, I don't know if I trust that. I don't trust that because it's all crooked looking. If I take this, I think I'd rather trust the top two holes because they look more parallel than this bottom one. Yeah. All right, and that brings this down just a hair. I hope this is right, you know? Not my design, but we'll find out. It says these are to be 930 seconds. So I have two options. I can drill this with my 930 seconds, or I can use my step drill, which I generally prefer, but I just have to be cautious that I don't go too far. So Okay, I'm gonna interject here. I made a mistake. <laughs> but if I'm not honest with you, then it's not worth doing. So I'm gonna show you what I did wrong. And this will be a lesson for all of you if you ever wanna do one of these. As I was going through these instructions and talking about these templates, I knew something didn't seem right whenever I was putting them in place. This one says specifically, Engine compartment side of firewall. This one says specifically, passenger compartment side of firewall. What's confusing to me on that uh, in that aspect is when I think passenger, I think passenger side. I don't think interior. So the confusion for me was I was thinking simply that this one on a passenger side of the firewall, which makes sense, but I screwed up. So if I'm not honest with you, again, you're not going to trust me later. I want to point this out. I, I knew something wasn't right whenever I drilled that hole. Well, the beauty of it is I can weld that hole shut, and maybe even some of these other holes that won't be needed going forward, but that hole does not belong there. It belongs over there, okay? Because whenever you put the template in, and it goes to that side and it follows the contour. I, I checked the length of this because if you look at it, there's a dip there, right? That's where the firewall has a big dent in it. And you look at that and you think, well, did they do a good job with the template? Honestly, they did. Because, you know, as, you, as I was putting this template up here, I was like, something's not right. Well, the template is correct because it compensates. The hole is offset based on that dip. So they do a good job with that. Now I haven't test fitted this again, but I will be. But just pay attention and yeah. Just letting you know. Let's get this goofy one here. Okay. At least get those get those in place. So I want to deeper the holes. I just have this cardboard here as a precaution. I know there's very unlikely that anything would get 
anywhere onto the engine, but cardboard and that Baxter belt sander. So that'll get me in some tight spaces. It's hard to see with that cardboard, right? Let's just see if I can clean that up. That works. Okay, I'm skipping ahead a little bit because the instructions on page 10 talks about installing this plate from the inside of the firewall. So looking from under the dash, you have the two large holes and then the smaller hole on the side and it's telling you to put in these grommets and get everything in place. I want to point this out because it's it's pretty easy to get confused by this stuff, but the holes are a match to the holes that are on the firewall. So this would face outboard towards the passenger side, and this would be the top. This hole right here is a giveaway because it's offset, and it does match up to what's on the firewall. I'm not going to put that in just yet. What I want to do is get these brackets attached, or this bracket itself, attached to the box, the main box. So it says uh, to ensure a watertight seal, and it's going to talk about adding silicone and stuff like that, but on a workbench, install the evaporator rear brackets and hard lines with properly lubricated O-rings. Install the front runner bracket onto the evaporator using these bolts. Lift the evaporator unit up under the dashboard, secure loosely on the firewall, Okay, at this point, I just want to get this bracket on. I may, I don't know if I put the lines on or not, I guess I will have to if I want to verify they go through the holes in the firewall. So I just want to get this assembled, and then I'll go back to putting in this, uh, this plate. So it looks like it already has bolts in it. I'll just take this loose. And I don't I don't know that there's a there's a hole there for some reason. But it doesn't look like it would make much difference. So let me get these bolts out. Hmm. Okay. I guess I just want you to draw it in. That would be my guess. Okay. So it looks like they just made a relief for that screw so that it wouldn't compress around it or deform it. And then it shows, um, well, putting the tubes on, which I don't, I guess I could put the tubes on temporarily, but then it's, po it's odd, it's pointing at, I guess it's, okay, the inner cowl, that's what it's confusing. It's talking about drilling two 3 16 inch holes into the inner cowl for these two holes. So you have to get it mocked into place and then drill some holes because it looks like you're going to be adding some screws somewhere. Yeah, two 14 by 3 quarter, or number 14 by 3 quarter sheet metal screws. So, okay. There's some confusion going on. I'm following the sequence, right? This is a number 10 showing this plate, previous steps, you know, putting on the templates and all that stuff. Page 10, page 11, it shows you installing one bracket. Well, there's two more brackets. 
Now I know where they go, but there's no instruction that says where to put them. It just tells you uh, install the front mounting bracket onto the evaporator hex bolt and tighten as shown in figure 7. Well, that's the front bracket. Doesn't say anything about putting in the rear bracket. Okay, let me just skip ahead of here a little bit. You would think it would tell you that, but it doesn't. But if you look at this picture, and this is just showing you um, route a piece of heater hose from the water pump to the lower line, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, that's great. But look, here's the bracket that it's not showing you. That it's not showing you. This is showing it in the car, not the installation of that bracket. So let me turn this around so you can see what is supposed to be happening. There's two more bracket mount points and this one will take this bracket with the hole in it. Why? Well, because that's where the heater uh, hoses connect, or the heater tubes. I don't know why it doesn't show you this. It seems really odd. And this one can only go one way because of the angles, because it has to be square to the firewall. Again, it's not showing you this in their instructions, so maybe this will help somebody in this, what's going to end up being probably a drawn out, boring video. So essentially, this is your heater core, and so the tubing that they want you to attach is going to go through that hole and then through this opening right here. <sighs> I know that, I, I'm pretty sure they have these seals on here, probably, well, there's a little rubber gasket, whoa, so it was under pressure. Which is a good thing to show you that the uh, thing is not leaking. The other tubes will come later. So these look similar, but they're opposite directions. So, probably pretty quick to figure out that one goes there, and that one's going to go there, and that puts them in alignment with each other, facing out. And there's probably some O-rings or something that go on here, but for now, it's just getting test fitted. And I... You know, it may take a little bit of adjusting to get these in the exact location that you need. So just know that. So I can already see these these uh, don't line up. The angle is going sideways. So you can see the angle's off. So one of these, probably this one right here, is going to have to get... Some reshaping to get through the holes or the hole in the firewall because the hole the holes in the firewall are parallel and these are definitely not so that's just part of the fun now I'm going to go put in that other plate get it bolted in I'm probably not going to film that part but it's showing it 
coming from the inside of the car. So it's going to go to the inside of the firewall and get bolted in place. So I'm looking through the paperwork and I'm trying to figure out something else. You know, they didn't have anything on these two brackets, at least not during this assembly process. So I was going through the pages and, you know, it's starting to get into the drain hose installation, heater control valve installation, going under the hood, talking about things. And as I move along, I'm like, there's something that's out of place. And I've come to page 20, which is completely out of sequence, in a sense. Because here it's talking about the brackets. The brackets that I just installed. And these bolts. Now that should have been way back when we were putting this together, I would believe, because you can't put those on from inside the car. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, here it's showing the bolts and everything that I just put in. So I don't, I don't understand that. Why would you have it? Because you can't do that. I mean, here it's, it's showing you installing it in the car, connecting all your hoses and control valves. This is showing it in the car, assembled. And then it talks about these other bolts and brackets. Doesn't make sense. I'm just pointing that out. But I did find this bag. It says miscellaneous hardware. And it has two retainers. These little, whatever you want to call them, washers with little, you know, like a star in the center. And that is for holding these bolts onto the brackets so that when you do put it underneath the car or inside the uh, underneath the dash, these bolts aren't falling out and causing problems. That doesn't show you how to make that fit very easily, but it should should press on. I say should. Let me see if I can come up with a way to make that happen. That's not very user friendly. Maybe I can make this work. Let me try this. Okay, if you're wondering, I'm using a 5 16 socket to get that on there, and I started off with a little, what is this, 8 millimeter? I can't see why this wouldn't be the sequence, because you can't put this on if it's under the car, if it's in the dash. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Alright, come on now. Okay, whew, this shouldn't have been that difficult. Now it's got these washer, or these uh, nuts are in a separate, they were in a separate bag. So, I wanna make sure everything threads on there because once I push this, put this up in place under the dash, you know, I wanna make sure that it'll take the, take the bolts okay. At this point, other than my concern with these being angled, I feel like I can try to fit this up under the dash. Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> I did a quick test fit. This is not going to work. That angle, this one is too short for some reason. So I'm going to have to see if I can't reshape that tube so that it'll fit. If I use that template that's provided, you can see how far off that is. Because this is this is square. This is straight up and down. If you look at that how it's laid, it's all nice and flat. So 
This one, I tried to put it in and no. So I'm going to have to take this one off. And I guess try to give it some help. Give it some, some, some love. We'll see what happens with that. Looks a little better. Mm, close. That's closer, but I still think it's got to go a little bit more. Or it could even be that this one needs to be moved a little bit more. Again, this is why I tell everybody, test fit, test fit, test fit. So I'm going to give this just a little bit more, and I'm just putting it against my hip and pushing on it. So, um, not moving it much. Obviously not trying to adjust it while it's on the assembly here. So... That looks much better. I'm going to try it again. It's very tricky to get this in. I'll just say that. I don't even know if I can get the camera set up in a way to show it because you have to rotate it with this, this bracket. You have to dip it up under the dash. So I'll, I'll see if I can maybe get an angle, but it's not easy. Okay, so I have the box up under the dash, and I'll do another shot of that here in just a minute. But in looking at the instructions, it tells you to drill two 3 16 holes so that you can put these uh, two number 14 by 3 quarter sheet metal screws into the cowl. The problem is, I don't have those screws. So if you look at the checkoff sheet, item number 8 clearly says to screw number 14 three quarter I don't even have a picture however I've gone through the box I've gone through all the packaging everything that I can and I don't have those so I'm gonna have to go and get some of those the other thing well there's a couple other things that I wanted to mention as well and I I, I know I sh said this earlier whenever I was underneath the car and I was talking about these covers for the cow and I said there's no there's no bolt holes or bolts on the passenger side and there isn't because there's not supposed to be they are on the driver's side so they're there on the uh, Dynacorn cowl and looking back over the instructions it, it goes back to blocking it off and I didn't pay attention to it it says right here number three uh, three number ten by one half sheet metal screws so hopefully I have those because um, actually you know what I don't have those either the only screws that I have are the number 14 unless I'm missing something yep those are all the same those are all the same so I'm missing also the three number 10 screws. So it looks like I'm going to go do a little shopping and find the rest of these. Everything else I think is there. The grommets, the clamps, this control, uh, control valve. Uh, everything else I assume is there, but definitely don't have those two screw deals. So anyway, I'm going to show you the housing underneath the dash. I know the lighting is probably not the best, but it does line up in the holes that I drilled. And then up here, this is where I want you to put in those two 
uh, sheet metal screws. So I'm going to have to drill two holes for those and go from there. Now, there are some other things that are kind of conflicting. I just want to show you this because, you know, I just, I only connected the two hard heater lines because I didn't want to fight with all four lines at the same time. These are contacting the in, you know the inside or inboard part of the hole that is for these. You know that's where they're designed. But I'm going to have to bend these tubes just a little bit and bring them so they're more center because you don't want that rubbing on that part of the body. The other thing that I'm noticing, and this is just you know pretty common issue with any of the, with these cars regardless but if you notice this tube there's not a lot of space there coming back to the uh, valve cover and then this tube which is really in line with the valve cover or below it they're saying to if I can pull on that page real quick yeah put in that flow control valve on the upper hose or the upper tube. Well this is the flow control, right? And it's showing it, well, facing that direction. And then this port goes towards the box. Well, yeah. That's going to have to be modified. There's no way that you're going to get this in line and make that happen. So I'm going to have to come up with some sort of way, you know, find some some elbow hose and maybe reconfigure this to where it's more out of the way. I don't know. But that's something else to think about, again, as we're test fitting things. So now that I know that the heater tubes they'll go through the holes and I need to adjust those. I'm going to take this back out and put on the other lines and make sure they go through the secondary plate. It's just just a process. I want to make sure, you know, I don't want to fight with everything all at one time, especially since I'm trying to put this together by myself. Another thing, pretty minor, but the bolts that come through the firewall, that's they're fairly long and you could probably shorten those up later on but for now that's where they're at and I think that's it so I'm gonna pull the box back out put the other lines on readjust the heater tubes and try to fit it again okay so I went to Lowe's and I needed the number 10 by one half sheet metal screws so there I have a pack of those and then I needed the other ones which were number 14 by three quarter so a pack of those as well. So now I need to drill some holes into the cowl. And if I remember correctly, it said 3 sixteenths for that. And the holes for the cover to go on the bottom of the cowl, I believe it was said eighth inch. So yeah, this says uh, drill two 3 sixteenths holes. And for the cowl, it says for the cover, drill 1 eighth inch holes. So I don't know if I'll do that right now or not, but I need to get these two in place, or two of these in place. Okay, it's really hard to film this, <laughs> but these are the two holes. I'm looking up from the floor pan with the camera, and I should have just enough length to get in there with my short air drill. So we'll find out. I'm going to push up on it a little bit, make sure I've got things feeling like they're level. Okay, there's one. I may have to try a different, uh, different setup for the next one. That's even tighter. I'm going to try a step drill. Well, 
step drill is not the answer either. It's longer than the drill bit that I have. But what I can do is put this one in. Okay. Man, I keep hitting everything under here. Everything's so loud. I did get a fresh drill bit though, so we'll see what happens with this one. Get my hands in here. Seems to be holding fine. And now what I want to do is I'll take these back out and unbolt it from the dash or the uh, firewall. Put those other tubes on and do another test fit. Okay, I'm going to open this up, and I've, you can hear it hissing. It's, the tag on it says coil, uh, coil lines are under pressure. Please remove caps carefully. I can hear the pressure bleeding out of it. Okay, pressure's gone. Now you can't really can't see it from that angle, but there's a plug, a rubber plug in there. So get that. Out. In there pretty deep. Okay. So obviously the lines are only going to fit one way, right? We would hope. But the thing is, it doesn't even show you attaching the lines. You know, it goes from the instructions of the plates on the firewall to putting on or fitting it up under the dash it's not showing you you know showing you where they are but nothing about the sequence other than lubricate o-rings and stuff like that uh, I do want to point out that I need to adjust these since they are a little bit on the long side or you know inboard so all I'm going to do is just kind of Use hand strength. I'm not, I don't have a camera on it, but it's going to rotate that a little bit. That improves that angle. Now the tubes in this kit, special bent, right? And inside the kit, there is a package of O-rings. I'm going to leave those in there because I'm not going to install the the O-rings just yet. I don't know. If, doesn't say one way or the other. Just shows you. Well, I'll take that back. I take that back. There's a fitting. There's a fitting. Because this end has a threaded threaded end, and this has a female end. So it can only fit one way. Well, I say that. Let me try that. <laughs> All right, well... It looks like the only choice is to go between the tube down here at the bottom. Angle that just a little bit better. So, and even then it's not square. I'm going to square that up just a little bit. 
I'm using my hand to support it in the back. I'm not pushing against the tube or against the evaporator. Now this one can't go up here. It has to go down there because there's a cutout right here on this bracket. So we're going to slip that underneath there. Yeah. That's closer. Let me get these wires out of the way. Now oddly enough, that's a big offset between these two. And it doesn't depict them that way in the picture. It shows them as being even and this lower one, the way it is right now, is basically even with the two heater core lines. So if I turn this, you can see this, this upper one sticking way out here. Big difference. So, but there's, I don't see another way for this one to fit because for it to fit on the, I don't know if that's the expansion valve, is, is that's, I think it's what it's called, but for that to fit on that, it, ha, it can, you can't twist this, you can't change, change the location of that, so this could be interesting. We'll find out. Okay, I've had this in and out a couple of times. <laughs> the first time I had it in, I, I didn't film it, but these tubes were slightly angled up and to the outside of the car. So took it in and out and I reshaped these a little bit to where they're now in line with each other. Even though we do have that offset, I don't think it's going to make any difference because as long as they're exposed, I can connect hoses to them. Also, the heater core is no longer touching. It's clear, so that's a good thing. And I think it's going to work just fine. The biggest issue, as I said, will be this lower, well, both of these heater hoses. I'm going to have to come up with something to change direction so that they're not running right into the back of the manifold or back of the uh, valve cover. But that's just the way it is. You know, they were designed with those holes in that location from the factory and they are using those. So that's the way it is. Not that there's much to see at this point, but I just want to show you how much of that sits below the line of the dash. It's quite a bit, but it's not going to interfere with anything, at least not at this point. I still, you know, in the future, we'll put on all the duct work for the vents and the defrost and all of that stuff, but it fits. All right, there's still a lot of little things that need to happen for this to be complete. Now, I'm not at that point. I'm just doing the test fit, drilling holes, making sure everything is going to line up the way it should. And with that, I wanted to point out a couple of things. You know, I show those tubes on, you know, sticking through the firewall. And I'm still a little concerned because the picture, as it shows it right here, is the two AC tubes are flush with each other. I don't know if I can remedy that, but I may experiment and see if I can. So I'm probably going to play with that a little bit before I continue with everything else, but that'll come later on. But I just wanted to show you that things will fit. You just have to play with them a little bit. Again, you can bend those tubes. You know, the smaller tube, you can put a, a screwdriver in there for leverage. And then the upper tube, I changed the angle slightly by sticking a socket in there on an extension. So it didn't mess up any of the threads or anything like that. I just used the internal diameter of the tube to make it move. Okay, again, there's still a lot more to do, but that's not gonna happen in this video. That'll come at a future date. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about, and that was the problem with the water pump outlet going to the lower radiator inlet. And I mentioned it earlier in the video that I'm waiting on a hose to show up. Look at that. Okay, this hose, or the idea of using this hose, was sent to me by Ricard in Sweden. He found a link, sent me the link, 
and I ordered this hose. This is a Gates 23308 and I believe from the web page it said this was for like a some sort of Ford turbo diesel truck. It also points out that it's a little bit long for the purpose. So I am going to try to make this hose fit. And in first mock-up, it looks like it's going to be pretty close. The only conflict I really see is this angle, because if you look at it, if I back up far enough, this would be the lower inlet for the uh, radiator. And then this would be for the water pump. I think this angle is too extreme, so I'm going to have to cut it back and see if I can't get the two to connect. So I'm going to play with that and then show you the end results. Now it's really hard to show this with the radiator in place, but the radiator is part of the process. And I can take this hose, I don't know how much you can see, but I'm going to try to show you that it actually gets pretty close to fitting the right angles on both. The only other issue would probably be the balancer. So that'll come later. We'll figure that out too. So as I was test fitting, I tried to put on or play with the harmonic balancer again. Now, in the previous videos or video, I showed where the timing mark was hitting the balancer and also the balancer was hitting the water pump as I was trying to put it on. Well, the owners talked to Ford Racing or Ford Performance and they had said they've seen this problem before and it had a lot to do with the bolt because the bolt is a little bit larger than the boss on the pump. So they had suggested taking the bolt out and seeing if it would fit and if it does trim down the bolt grind down the edge so you don't have so much you know hitting. So what I did is I took the bracket loose that was on the side for the timing mark and you know that gave me some room to slide the balancer on. Now of course I can't show you right now exactly but I can kind of you know give you a reference maybe if I can get my hand in there and show you there's a balancer. So I, I managed to get the balancer on uh, a good bit. It's only made it about three-eighths of an inch under the water pump. So if I try to take a piece of paper and put between the balancer and the water pump, it won't go. It's definitely making contact. And my thoughts are, could I just blend down the lower side of the water pump? You know, I don't want to get crazy and take off any of the structure of the housing, but if the boss, it looks like actually the, the that side or that location has been ground or machined or manufactured with a flat spot so that it was meant to clear the balancer. But I'm thinking that maybe if I just kind of cleaned that up and took off some more material, the balancer might just go on the way it is. So let me show you... Um, the underside of the vehicle and this hose. I thought I would use a camera to my advantage and show you the bottom boss, let's say on that on the uh, water pump and the balancer. So I'm going to tilt this a little bit because it's hard to get in here, but you can see that it's definitely making contact. All right, let's look at the hose. There's the hose goes under the balancer, slips on the lower inlet of the radiator, and I will say that's pretty close. Now, I've trimmed this thing down, and you can see it's got a little bit of a, I don't know, a flat spot, but it's not really flat, it's just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I think that, that would probably take care of that lower hose problem. And it doesn't really protrude, you know, underneath the vehicle. It's above the uh, power steering rack and above the frame rail. So I think that's going to solve the problem for that hose. Just to show you, this is what I cut off 
of the hose. And I think that was a little bit more angled like that. And I'd cut it off initially following that line. And then I took off some more material on this edge so that it could press against that flange. So I think there was two cuts that I made and just took away some material. But that part number is probably the answer. All right, so that's going to be the end of this video. Other than I think I'll still do, I need to do the drawing. So let me take care of that and then I'll finish out. Okay, so this is Brooklyn Pony part 46B. It's showing 56 comments. Some of them may be individual, some may be multiple of the same people. So I'm going to copy the URL and then go to the random comment picker get YouTube comments okay so it says amount of unique commenters is 41 so we'll come down here and start raffle okay let's see what it says winner is Terry Allsports comment Thanks, Barry. Another really informative video. Assuming you use a smaller diameter balancer and larger diameter crank pulley so that the ratio is maintained and the accessories rotate the correct speed, would it otherwise affect the power steering and flow rate, alternator charge, and coolant flow, or would the difference be negligible? Well, that's a very long comment, and I want to thank Terry for that. I, th I think I responded to that, but in that comment is asking about changing you know, the size of the pulley but the pulley is not going to, I'll use the pulley that came with the kit and that'll take care of all those questions and make everything run the same way so Terry Allsports has won the drawing alright so Terry Allsports has won the drawing send me an email Terry to joedaddiesgarage at gmail.com and then we'll get an address and I'll get your prize in the mail you know this video may not be the best in the series I know that looking at the directions, there's some confusing aspects to it. I tried to address that. I know I made some errors in the process, and I've corrected those, and that's how it is. Sometimes you just aren't flowing very well, and that's the way this video feels. But I hope you've learned something from it. I hope that it helps you with your install if you're doing one of these vintage air front runner kits, and I really hope that that hose it looks like it's going to work so I'm very excited to have that at least checked off and now uh, again as as I said I'm going to experiment with the harmonic balancer again and the water pump and see if I can't come up with a fix because I'd rather not use a different piece of equipment and if I can get away with what is available here I'll do that now it may involve me removing the water pump there may be a little bit of play in the location of the pump you know sometimes just the thickness of that bolt or the gap around the bolt could affect the placement of that water pump and that might make a difference as well but I will experiment and see what I can come up with there's a few other things that need to happen as I said you know the hoses wiring all those different things and one of the important things is going to be the heater control itself I don't have one of those so we're gonna have to get a new one so that I can attach the electronic controls to the original style of control unit for the heater box and air conditioning. So anyway, I think that's going to be, well, it has to be it. That's all I can really say. <laughs> but as it is, I want to thank you for subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. You know, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. Well, why not? I'll do, I'll do a drawing on this video too, because I want to see what kind of comments I get out of this video. It, it just doesn't feel like it's been one of my better videos, but hey, that's how it is. So leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, and I'll have a drawing on this video in the next video. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage.
didn't sound very good at all. Along with that, I had some issues. I don't like that one. Oh, that's a mess. Driver side evaporator rear bracket template. Whoops. The uh, ducting system. Something like, let's see, rod a piece of paper. No, sorry. Sheet metal bolts, sheet metal screws, whatever you want to call them. Uh, let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over. Now, I don't know if I bumped the switch or not. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. Nope, that's not even what I'm looking for. 